Hey guys, how you doing? This is JP Sari Kolia coming to you once again uh, with another book review. And this time, in preparation for the newest uh, the Tomb Raider game that is uh, it's coming, that is going to be released, I think next weekend. I decided to continue on on the Tomb Raider, uh, the archives uh, that are produced by um, uh, Dark Horse Comics. Uh, I did review last year uh, the first uh, volume of this collection, and of course, I want to finish it. So uh, today, we're gonna re uh, review the second volume which is a very cool volume and I really like this one the cover is Adam Hughes there's an introduction by Randy Green and let me give you before we go into it a comparison to the previous uh, um, uh, volume volume one as you can see this is actually a larger book and actually the pages are a lot thicker and we're gonna go in detail about this but as you can see this is volume one which is actually my favorite and the whole collection because he contains the art of Andy Park primarily. This one still contains some of the final issues of Andy Park and other artists and we're going to also go in detail about this but you can see the big difference. Beautiful books, beautiful collections by uh, uh, in this case uh, Dark Horse. They know how to produce hardcover books. I definitely uh, you get your your money's worth on this collection. So let's go into the, the, the book as you can see right here hardcover archives volume 2 Adam Hughes, and of course on the side you have this uh, the the covers of some of the iconic um, issues in this collection, which many of them were my favorite uh, when they came out. And as you can see right here, Tomb Raider, it's Volume Two, pretty cool. Archives Two, it maintains the same standard. Tomb Raider, Lara Croft fears only one thing: boredom. Uh, and you can see contains the volume collects issues 16 to 24. It's missing number 25, which was a uh, which is a shame, but it was a crossover between Witchblade, uh, of course, and Tomb Raider uh, for you know for you know I suppose. Um, for the issues with Tomb Raider, in this case with Top Cow, uh, they, they are unable to pr uh, print it here because, of course, this is now uh, uh, by Dark Horse Comics, uh, which is a shame. It should have been complete, but whatever, it, it happens. So, uh, and of course, it's of the 1999 Top Cow Tomb Raider series and features the art of superstar artists Adam Hughes, Andy Park, Randy Green, Tony Daniels, and many more. Uh, love the art, love the design. Of course, Crystal Dynamics, the Square Enix, this is the prize, which is a bargain in comparison. This book. Uh, I can tell you one thing. I love Marvel Comics. I love the omnibuses. I love DC. But if you're going to compare the price uh, with other companies, Dark Horse and IDW, man, they do create great collections for a fraction of the Marvel price. Uh, and you know what? Nothing wrong with that. I really love that. So let's open in here. I love the art. This this intro page, of course, is Andy Park art. And it goes straight to it. Archives. Beautiful Andy Park art, very distinctive art. Uh, here you go, more information. Here there is a table of contents. Uh, contents. Uh, uh, unfortunately, what I don't like about this is it doesn't have a list of the artists involved into the project. All the, the only people that you have see here are the people that are actually uh, in charge of reprinting this collection, but not the actual artists. The only way to know who will participate here you have to go to the every single issue which is a shame I think Marvel does a much better job in recognizing the people there uh, here you see an introduction Ben Randy Green who was actually uh, uh, the artist after actually uh, Andy Park left of course there were other artists but I think he was the main one and we're gonna see his art and of course let's go straight to the covers of course no no there's no logo from uh, from Top Cow all of that is missing which is okay uh, and of course Andy Park and you gotta love this. Of course, the introductions are here, so they're not in the front, but they're inside the pages, which is okay. I I, I like that. That's fine. Uh, but here you go, and it starts pretty good. Uh, I really I like the stories. I I definitely like uh, Dan Jurgens. Dan Jurgens was doing the in this case the writing, uh, and if you know Dan Jurgens, um, he's been you know well known. He's worked for every company uh, imaginable on the on the. On the face of the earth, uh, but primarily, uh, of course, he has done all the stuff for DC. He's very well known for his Superman run that you know lasted for many years, and he did a lot of Superman stuff. You know, he's an artist, writer, inker. He, he's a colorist. He's done everything. Uh, but one thing I like about Dan Jurgens uh, is his understanding. He's a, uh, in his art, his writing. Some people might not like it as much, but what I like about him is that his art. Um, he, he recognizes, he knows his characters and 
he knows him so well in the sense that he, he presents very smart stories that go within the character, personality, and traits. Uh, and I think this is well reflected here. Um, he understood uh, this character to the point. Look at this beautiful cover, Andy Parks. Uh, this is Pieces uh, of Zero, which is the collection, uh, the last, actually, collection. And look at that, and the part of core, you got Jonathan Zabal, he was an inker, uh, he's an inker, and he, he did a lot of the inking on this book, um, and he works for Tub Cow, he's very, he has done inking for all the companies, but you have everybody else, and um, I really love it, you know, I love, love the style, um, the, the, page, the page layout of Andy Park, look at that. But going back to Andy Jurgens, uh, you know, beautiful, beautiful here, she looks very beautiful there, and... Um, about Dane Jurgens, he knows his characters and he knew what to represent in this case of Tomb Raider. You know, as a Tomb Raider a stories, they have to be all about adventure, all about, you know, the artifacts, all about uh, the Indiana Jones feel. And uh, he gave that into the stories. I think he injected Dan, injected that into the stories. I think that's what made their, not only the art of Andy Park, but also the storylines really made him popular uh, in the first part of the, 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 you know, in this case of this collection when it back came out in 1999. People were really thrill about it uh, because the stories were fun where be, be, be besides anything that has to do with superheroes um, you saw stories that they were more uh, in tune with that uh, in tune with adventure you know with uh, the Tomb Raider the the, the style that the, in this case the Indiana Jones style the adventure um, and all of that is important the little sci-fi a little bit of a you know a, you know all kind of things those things that we love in, in movies you know and, and here you see and this is actually a first cover and a deer of the cat and this is Adam Hughes who doesn't love Adam Hughes? I should review more stuff about Adam Hughes. I have a couple of his um, art books, and I will at some point I will get the chance to do it. But man, I, I love Adam Hughes. Adam Hughes is such a phenomenal, phenomenal, uh, you know, artist. You know, his covers. You know, he's famous for it. And this is the art of uh, uh, Gerardo Sandoval, which is a Mexican. Uh, he is a Mexican. Um, uh, artist. Uh, he started, uh, he, this actually was his, uh, ba the biggest art before he started kind of in the comics and commercial comics into more famous and uh, mainstream American comics. Uh, and this was his first art. And uh, we're looking at Sandoval, he just, his art is so, um, it has that Mexican vibe, you know, if, if, if what I'm trying to tell you is this, I, I, I'm Mexican, I was born in Mexico, so I live in Mexico, so I know as a kid, so I know uh, Mexican comics, and Mexican comics have this cartoony style, they have this distinctive style, if you have been there. Uh, and you know that, and he does have that, but he has that that uh, that that art, that a combination. His art combines well with this manga style because manga and animation is very popular in Latin America. Uh, so he does have that that feel, that 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 cartoony uh, style that is been is prevalent for many years, but also that Mexican style. Um, I'm gonna say that it is the greatest. Um, I, but you know he has that distinctive, uh, you know, kind of feel that sexy feel that he has, and you can see that. Uh, and the cartoony and uh, the adventure part is a little um, over the top in certain t in certain ways. So he he introduced that. And he, of course, this was his uh, first. Um, introduction to it this was his first uh into you know mainstream comics i really love this one i love the way he he portrayed this one it has a lot of the animation manga feel in it uh which is really really cool uh and you know but he's been doing work for a lot of people now he does a lot of work for uh, he has a lot of work for marvel and uh very popular stuff a lot of stuff with venom but you can see that you can see that here, and then it goes back again to Pieces of Zero, Part Three, and this is Andy Park, and uh, continue with Andy Park. You know, just I, I love Andy. Um, Andy has been, I think he's been all over the place. He started technically uh, working with Wildstorm, working with Jim Lee, and doing stuff there, and then of course move into uh, other areas where he did a lot of stuff for Top Cow, and he was very popular when this came out back in 1999. The first issue was the biggest seller of the year. And of course, it really prompted him. It really put him in a really uh, uh, good position in, in comics. You know, people wanted more of him, and uh, he he really worked really really well. And um, he did this this run 
until issue 20th, if I'm not mistaken. And then, of course, he left and he went to work for Marvel Comics. Uh, really nice run there, too. But he has all kind of stuff. But before, after comics, he left comics and he went to do, because he's a graphic designer, which is, is trade. He went to work for, for Sony. He did a lot of art design for a lot of their games like got War and uh, other games uh, for the Sony franchise. And, of course, after that, he started working for Marvel, doing some of the design for the, the MCU. And he's been uh, extremely involved. And nowadays, he has a good job there where he does a lot of, uh, uh, he's the head in some of those departments that do a lot of the, the in this case, the custom design. He does the, the graphic design for a lot of the art, uh, particularly in some of the newer movies, like you see the Ant-Man and the Wasp. He's been in... Um, with uh, Thor Ragnarok, uh, with um, uh, uh, the Gal Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, he's been involved. He's actually the head on the designing of the, the the uniforms and the all the disguises and the art style. So you know, pretty pretty indeed, it's a pretty good job. But this was his beginnings. This were where he really got really famous and people loved them. And you know what? I totally agree. I love the art. I love this sequential art. He does have that school. I think if I'm not mistaken, he he did work. Uh, with uh, Scott Campbell for a while, so he does have a lot of his style imprinted in it. And of course, Scott Campbell learned under Jim Lee, so yeah, you can see that he, yeah, from the newest uh, that generation that came after the 90s, after Jim Lee, uh, all the apprentices of Jim Lee and the people that work with him and the, uh, you know, Sylvester, he's one of the highlights in my opinion. His work is a highlight and you can see it right here. So, love it. I love the way he does. I think he, he is, uh, he is Laura Croft is one of the best, if not the best, in my opinion, design, art design. Of course, this follows after the the games, you know, and the more recent games. So, of course, he has that distinctive style. Uh, the, the paper here is, is very thick, um, and you can see. And this is actually the farewell for Andy Park. This is where he ends. This is his last page. That's the end for that. And then, of course, we got other artists. And you know what? The art wasn't bad, and we're going to explore more of that. Uh, and this is Randy Green. This is the first time Randy Green... Uh, does this is a cover he did and um of course still and now there's we have also a new writer which is john near reaver if you're johnny reaver he did a lot of stuff for top cow he did a lot of some stuff for marvel uh he has a lot of stuff for different i would say indie companies uh, he's not as a well-known uh, writer but he has some some really interesting stuff uh, and you know his writing style is different and i think it really uh, it was not bad here uh, his stories he kind of continue on uh, and in this case andy green is fresh into it uh, there's not much work really and he andrew green has worked for all companies for different companies his work is not as, uh, as 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 pronounced as famous as other artists but he has done his work his share of works and uh his style is a lot he has a lot of manga style like a lot of animation style anime in, in influence in it and this is his first uh uh issue that he did uh, which is okay uh, there's times that i love his art there's times when he i love this for example this panel and there's times that his art left you know leaves a lot to be desired uh, to be honest with you, but uh, as, as as he progresses, he can you can see his 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 evol you know evolution in this style. You can see that he's getting comfortable with it, and you can see here. I like this cover. This is a pretty good cover. It does great covers, and uh, you know he's getting more and more and more uh, you know comfortable in it. And uh, Saval is still doing the inking part. You know he did this, uh, the inking for a lot of the stuff for Top Cow. Um, you know has worked for Top Cow for many many years. But here you can see, I love this spread out page, cool, big, still um, not as well organized as others. I think he's working on it. He was working on it, making it more fluid. And I think that fluidity was just showing up, but he was not at the same level. And, and I think at this point, what I like about this is that he does do a good, a very com competent work uh, and, and really reci uh, recipro reciprocating the art or copying the art or following after in this case Andy Park. I think he did good. Uh, and of course the, the stories here are more in tune with the games during that time, the, that the, those early 2000s. Um, a lot of the stuff that they were doing uh, you know for, for this game for Tomb Raider uh, which is cool and I love the coloring. Of course this is a more modern coloring but 
extremely, extremely cool. I like modern crowns. A lot of people have problems with coloring. I don't know why with digital coloring. But to be honest with you, I don't have an issue with it. Um, of course, some people have an issue with recoloring. I always like this. This is one of my favorite covers from from Randy Green. I definitely looks that that you know it's one of those that you look at the the stand at the comic book store and you feel like oh wow this is something that I definitely would get into. Um, I don't know. I think the covers are extremely important to attract uh, you know the people. The good part is that they actually the artists that they were doing in this case the the inner part and I like this figure here. Like I said, you know there's times with Randy is good. It's really good. And uh, his style is more comfortable. He's getting very, very, very comfortable. So uh, the cover is important uh, to me. Extremely, extremely important. And this is an Andy Park cover. He did the co cover. But, of course, it was a different artist. It was, uh, uh, again, it was Gerardo Sandoval, the one that did it. And, um, of course, that's the part where you kind of feel bad because I like to have the same people that does the cover. I want to see the art inside. I, I don't want to be deceived. But here, Gerardo is doing good. I, I like here. I think, you know, this is the second time uh, or the third time that he comes into it. And, of course, you, you, you can feel his distinctive style. He, 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 the way he does the art is good at times. At times, it's not as good. But he has a very distinctive Mexican style. This is one that is a bit disorganized, disorienting. And this is one that I'm not really a fan. You know, like everything, you can criticize the artist, you know, their techniques and their styles. And sometimes, you know, they experiment with things. Sometimes things don't pan out. But it's a bit disorienting, you know, like where you go. You know, you, you can go straight here. But, uh, you know, I don't know. It just it feels better when you go from this page and this page and then move to this one. This is just an easier way to do it, uh, maybe, but not necessarily the best one. And he did it here. So, you know, like artists, like everything else, they experiment with the art. They do a lot of things that may not necessarily be everyone agrees on. But definitely, I feel that he, he it was not as great. And then he's another Randy Green. And this is a very good cover. Actually has very macabre, you know, feel. But this is a definitely good, good, good cover. So here is when I would say Randy, he's just you know getting really good at it. You know, he's more comfortable with it. He really likes this style. He really likes the way he's doing things. I, I, I'm to me, I feel that he was just doing a very com competent job. And of course, he was becoming more and more popular uh, as time went by. And uh, you can see what he's doing. And I hear this another one. This is another Randy Green cover. Very good. You know, he's a good cover artist. And uh, he he's doing that. He has to help with other artists. But definitely, definitely good. And, um, you know, one thing about this pay, this collection is that the paper is a lot thick, which makes it even harder to kind of move the pages. But the binding is excellent. Of course, this have, it weights more than the other because of the paper is a lot thicker. The other one, the paper, the, the volume one, the paper was already thick. But this one is even double the thickness and this is La uh, this is Lasang has a lot of covers particularly for Top Cow uh, and this is the art of Scott Benefield. Scott Benefield has done a lot of art for for different different companies um, he has done a lot of stuff I think from you know a lot of stuff for DC I has done a lot of stuff also for Marvel but I think he's doing a lot of stuff for Top Cow <clears throat> for Dark Horse so his art is, is, is good at times you know this I don't like this face here I don't like this panel but then it changes and sometimes the faces are better, have much better expressions. The dimensions are better. I like some of his dimensions. I, li I like some of his stuff. But some of the stuff is not that good. I love this one. It's so funny. She looks so funny there. You know, you can see the expression. So he's a bit inconsistent, at least on this. And, but, you know, it's normal when artists change into a new storyline or they move into a new book. Uh, <clears throat> the first issue might be always a bit oh the first couple of issues they might feel uncomfortable because of course what they're doing is they just following and the trends of someone else so it's hard you know because first you have to find that that you know that ability to copy what everyone else is doing not to to be completely totally different change the art of the the the, the you know the rhythm of things into something different so it might not be the most comfortable thing and you can see that in his expression he has his cheeky expressions you know this physical expression so I don't know I don't think he was feeling as comfortable there but you know I, I think as the as the pages went along I keep them out that that he find much better time you know much uh, he was more comfortable she looks great right there here's a cover but um by the company that did the, the video game so 
I'm okay with those covers. I'm not as, as a fan. But this is, again, is uh, uh, Mr. Sandoval, Gerard Sandoval. Uh, he's doing all the art, and of course, he's doing his thing. Again, his sequential art, or the way he does his uh, panel layout. But look at that, you know, very extreme. A lot of horror. He loves the horror stuff. Uh, he does, he's been doing a lot of Venom stuff. And I think it works well for his style, um, if you ask me. It, it does work well. He has that really very, very, very dark Mexican style into certain things, you know, cartoony, horror, uh, animation, and all in, in one. So, yeah, you can see that here. So, yeah, man, you know, we, we, we there's a lot of good stories here. As, as time go, go, goes along, as you read the stories, of course, you still uh, feel losing some of that um, vibe that first started. Of course, you have a different writer who's ex experimenting with a lot of horror stuff. And uh, John uh, Reaver is doing a lot of that experimentation with some horror stuff um, that, you know, I don't think that uh, in this case, um, Jurgens was too much into it. He was more into the adventure aspect. So uh, as, as time goes along, you can see that reflection in, in the change of tone. And also, I would say, kind of affected some of the... The, the way some people perceive the stories and Tomb Raider and the direction. And I think that's when some people start kind of jumping off the boat and going into different routes. Uh, I think it started changing a little bit. There were also other offshoots, uh, other collections coming out within the same uh, world. And, um, you know, things change. And here's another different artist. This is uh, Pop Mon. Uh, if you, Pop Mon, if I'm probably pronouncing the name wrong, he is an artist that was born in Thailand. He was born in Thailand, but he was brought to the U.S. when he was a kid. When he was like three years old, so he's an American citizen now. But he's been known for his art, his art style. He does a lot of stuff. Uh, he has this very, uh, he, Pop, you know, he actually um, went in sc to school with uh, Wildstorm with uh, Jim Lee. So he studied sequential art with Jim Lee. So um, he is definitely uh, of that school, and uh, of course here he is just when well, he's still young. So he's doing a lot of stuff for Top Cow, for Image Comics, for different companies. But he has done for a lot of work for a lot of people, at other different different companies. Uh, and as you can see right here, so definitely um, I'm not gonna say that I love his art. It's his art is okay. It, it gets better at some point. I love when he does this. He is famous for doing this art and does the design for a lot of, uh, you know, you know, games and comic books and uh, some collectible items. All of that is this. Actually, he's one of the creators of that art style. He's one of the ones that emphasizes the art style, which is very Japanese. Uh, but here you see Angel of Darkness. This is, again, another art uh, cover by um, by the great Adam Hughes. And this is Tony Daniels. Uh, Tony Daniels did some of the, I think, the, the, uh, the issues initially on the, on the first volume. But Tony Daniels, uh, very well known. He's been working from you know every single company. And lately, he's been doing a lot of stuff with this DC. And uh, Tony Daniels is very well known and famous in it. You know, he's very good at it. I love his art. I love Tony Daniels. I do. I do think that um, after, and I said that before. I think in my previous video, after the art of. Um, uh, in this case, uh, Andy Park, I think Tony Daniels was second in, in the list of good artists. I think he did a, a very, com, com, you know, very good job uh, and really finding that vibe, that feel. And as you can see, his, his depiction, body depiction, is extremely, extremely, extremely good. He does good. You know, he really, you know, respects the character well. Now, the only thing I can see here is that he does a lot of big panels. Which, which is easier to do that way, but also a bit lazy in some ways. So because there's not much to see, you know, all you see this big panel, make it easier. And this is another Adam Hughes cover. You know, Adam Hughes, man, I don't know where he gets all this. You know, his ability to draw. He didn't go to school, uh, art school, but he's just natural. And he does it, and, you know, he's good at it. And here again, Tony Daniels, again, another story. The same story, but here you go. And like I said, you know, love his sequential art, love his big panels. Of course, they're too big at times, which it kind of steals you from more art, so you get less and less for what you pay for. But, you know, honestly, he's not bad at all. Uh, I really look, I like, and of course, he has a, he went on the school of uh, Silvestri because that's where he, he learned from. He, that's where he started. And really with Silvestri, oh, love this one. Always love this one. Very good. Very good uh, panel here. Nice page, lay, ni nice page, and all of that. But yes, he 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 knows that. And of course, it's another. I think by that time, the I think they needed the punch. 
And one thing that happened with Tub Cow um, is that, you know, they have a lot of young artists. Not necessarily the ones that attract a lot of people. You know, they give, and that happens when you have a small company. A Top Cow, was, you know, was under the imprint, of course, of Image Comics. But, you know, he's, it's not uh, as big a name as other companies of Marvel or DC. So they don't have the big bucks. So they, they go for the younger artists. But one thing I can say about Image and all the different companies within Image is that, um, that it, you know, they, they, they found a lot of great, great artists in their midst. You can find some phenomenal, phenomenal artists hard and phenomenal people there of course I end up moving to Marvel at DC because everyone wants to work at some point with Marvel or DC that's when actually your name comes uh, you know grows and you become more famous and here at the end of this book there is an archives a cover gallery as you can see Andy Park of course is a very good cover this is another extreme good cover with Andy Park here you go another Andy Park and of course Adam Hughes so definitely very good cover here you have Andy Park again, Andy Park. Those are the best covers here. And of course, then you have a uh, Randy Green, another Randy Green cover. Um, here you go. This is another this Clarence uh, Lazan, who he, Lanzan, who he does a lot of covers for Tub Cow. There's a lot of covers for Witchblade and some of the Tub Cow stuff. And of course, here another Randy Green. Here you have another Randy Green. Randy Green has his particular style. This is an Andy Park cover, very good cover. And this is a Randy Green, a very good Randy Green cover, like I said before, Randy Green. So he does a lot of this stuff here. Randy Green does a lot of it. Ida's Core, uh, uh, Ida's Core, the company that does, of course, the, the games. They have Clarence Lensine. This is another cover for Clarence. Here you got another Ada's Core, the video game. Then you have a Tony Daniels. Tony Daniels, very particular. Not a, such a fun with, not, not the greatest cover, uh, dimension-wise. I, I, mean, I don't think so. You see the arms look a bit small compared to the legs. So it's probably just because of the, the, the angle, but it still it doesn't seem right. And here you have Potmon. The cover, it's all right. But I like this little cover. You see, I like this one. It's pretty cool. <laughs> it looks very cool. And, of course, Adam Hughes, beautiful cover. Of course, and then you have Tony Daniels, another, this is a great cover by Tony. This is Adam Hughes, definitely a great cover. And this is Tony Daniels, and a very famous cover, a really a very sexy cover right here. And, of course, Adam Hughes, and then you have Tony Daniels again. And, of course, it's a Tales of Laircroft, December 2003 and August 2007. This is a publication of, of some comics that they were produced, of course, by fans, if I'm not mistaken. Or uh, they, 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 they were for some non-profit organization. They were trying to make some money for a non-profit. So pretty cool that this was included as an extra uh, tidbit, an extra uh, little bit of, uh, you know, I don't know, an extra just for you, just for you to have it. So, which is good. There's not many, many extra besides the covers and that. And this is it. You know, definitely, definitely a good book. So, uh, now, ending this video, uh, do I recommend this book? Um, I certainly do. I do recommend this book, but I don't recommend it for everyone. I recommend it for anyone that really was a fan of this Tomb Raider series. If you're a fan of Tomb Raider, this is definitely of the original series, then you should have this one. It's a continuation of the previous one. You should have the collection, just to have the, you know, the full scope of the whole story uh, of this Top Cow run, which was, in my opinion, was good. Uh, not the greatest. I think I like the original part. I like the covers. I like the art. The art was ex excellent in many ways, um, but not necessarily. I would say that it was, uh, uh, you know, groundbreaking. Uh, and but yes, it did have a, a you know, an impact in the comics of that time, and it still does. And if you're a Tomb Raider fan, you love Tomb Raider as a series. Uh, particularly the older Tomb Raider games, you definitely need to have it. And even if you're a newer Tomb Raider fan, maybe, you know, you can get into know more about the character by, by reading this comics, because it definitely kind of plays along with the, the comics, even though it's in a different timeline now with everything that has come out. Uh, I highly recommend it for them. Now, for everyone else, if you're not a fan of the 90, uh, the 2000, early 2000s stuff, you're not a fan of this art style, you're not a fan of adventure comic books, it, this is not going to change you, this is not going to make any difference, so definitely it's not for you. Now, the prices are are good you can find them there everywhere you can find Amazon you can find them in a lot of stores you know the prices are excellent and for the price you're getting a really excellent excellent book collection so um, so I definitely recommend that if you are into all of those things besides that you know just just move along just go for something else that you like the most but the price is different excellent and there's four volumes and I will get to review each one of them already right, they won this is the second one I will review volume three and volume four in the days to come but uh, once again thank you for watching this video I appreciate the time you have spent with me 
If you have any questions, just uh, leave your questions below. Any comments, uh, please. I want I want to like to hear what people say about these things. I like to hear you really like it. What you uh, that this reviews. I want to hear if you you want some any ideas, any tips. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, you know, click the annotation bell. The in this case the notification bell, so that way you know when the videos are coming out. Uh, also uh, follow me on the different uh, you know social media platforms like uh, in this case my Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter. All of that information is down below. So once again, thank you, my friends. God bless you. I'll see you on the next book review next week. Take care.